What's up everybody? It's Matt here and today we're in Clovis, California in a beautiful neighborhood and this house is listed for $785,000. It's a six bed, four and a half bath, 4,269 square foot house on an 8,960 square foot lot. This house has a three car garage over here to my right. It has a big driveway that you can pull up big impressive doors leading into the entryway. Let's come on inside. But wait, before we go inside, I wanna thank listing agent Caleb Chuka for letting us come tour his beautiful listing. This listing is located at 2342 Trenton Avenue in Clovis, California. Stepping inside into the entrance of the property, you're automatically drawn to the floors. Beautiful marble tile, and they have glass tile breaking it up, giving it a warmer effect so it's not so cold. And look how intricate this little pattern is they did in the tile here. I really like that pattern, that's a nice touch. And then your eyes are drawn right up to these super tall ceilings, giving this a super big feel, but they do a good job bringing the chandelier down so that when you're at your table, it's not going to seem like such a big room. It still cozies up the space while showing how expansive it is. We have the living space over here, dining space over here. That's what I see there, but you could do a lot of different arrangements with this size of room, which is nice. Entrance to your backyard and pool area that we will get in a minute. The glass tile kind of almost outlines the entryway into the kitchen. So let's come into here. Immediately, you see that this is more than just the kitchen. It's almost like a second living space. You have over here a nice living area with a gas fireplace, another door to your backyard and pool area. These very nice natural stone countertops. Still, it has a nice marble flooring continued throughout this room as well. Wood cabinets with the detailed crown molding. So Elena just brought up how this tile pattern here behind the stove matches the one on the floor when you enter the property. That is a cool congruence there to have that. Also, the same glass tile that was on the floor continues on the backsplash around here and looks really pretty. Add some sparkles to the kitchen. We have our gas range over here. It's a GE. We have our microwave oven over here. We got a pretty fancy hood. It looks more commercial than most hoods you get. And I like how they even blended in the ceiling, that crown molding to break up just that stainless look going up into the ceiling. Over here we have your coffee nook or serving counter. Nice sized island, got the plugs on it, have some storage underneath. Coming this way, we have our dishwasher and our stainless double sink over here. And then this refrigerator, double doored, huge refrigerator, GE. And then back here, you're going to have your pantry, which is always nice to have that in the house for your dried goods, extra dishes. This kitchen as seen has plenty of storage. Whether you're a big family or you're really into cooking, this kitchen does not disappoint. So we are back at the entryway heading into our bedroom number one, and this does have a bath on it. So since it is right off the foyer, 
This could easily be an office. You have a nice storage closet. You've got your bathroom. You have tile floor, the faux wood pattern that we've seen in other housing developments. I like that because it creates the warmth while giving you the durability of the tile. View to the front yard so when clients would come up the driveway and park, they have plenty of room and you could see them out the window and they could come on right in. Especially since more people are working from home or homeschooling, this could also be a classroom as well. Here's the stairs leading up to the second story that we will be touring in a bit. But first you come across bathroom number two. So I noticed about this house when I first came in about how every bedroom that has a bathroom, it's not included as like the bathroom for that floor. What I'm trying to say is this is the bathroom for your guests. That bedroom gets its own bathroom. So that's always nice. So when you have guests or you're entertaining, they come into this bathroom and you do not have to share one of your bedroom bathrooms. And this also accesses the backyard. So it's like a pool bathroom, which is also nice. You come in from the pool. You don't want them coming through the whole house with their wet feet or whatever. So this leads right to the backyard. They can come in, use the bathroom, wash up, and then go back outside without tracking the water all over your house. We have nice dark wood cabinetry here, which I like. It's a change of pace of the lighter colors. Glass backsplash, dual vanity sinks. We have white tile floor with a little bit of texture in it. Over here, we actually have a walk-in tile shower. Storage closet in the hall leading to the bath. And this is like a junior primary bedroom behind me right here. Again, wood tile floors, but it's a different color and texture. So it kind of breaks it up and looks different. It actually more looks like actual wood with the coloring variants in this tile. Gonna have a pretty nice size slide closet over here. Your own entry into the backyard off sliding glass doors. Got the window, TV hookups, plenty of plugs. And then this bedroom, of course, has its own bathroom. So we're just gonna have one vanity sink right here. Again, this nice, rich looking, dark colored wood cabinetry, tub insert, different tile floors. This is like a white gray. And this bedroom, I instantly feel, you know what? It's bigger just because of the ceiling height. Even though we're not in that entryway dining area that has the super, super high ceilings, just the regular height of this downstairs floor is really high. I'd say they're about nine foot ceilings at least. All right, let's go up to story number two. Nice beefy wood banister leads you up these stairs. The way that they slope the staircase and the height of each of the treads is really easy to walk up. They have some beautiful wrought iron spindles on this staircase and on the banisters, which is really nice. They grabbed my attention instantly. And I like how they even made them the gold color and not the typical wrought iron color that you would see. We're continuing upstairs on the landing. This is a nice, this could be like a chill lounge area that we see in some of these bigger, fancier homes. You have like a couch here, TV over there, almost like a second den. This is the first bedroom up here, right off of that lounge area on the landing. We're gonna have, again, tall ceilings, even though we're on the second story of this house. We have a nice slide closet. This window overlooks your backyard. The first bedroom that we just looked at at the end of the landing lounge area, we're now walking off to the side here to the second upstairs bedroom. We have a big window, slight closet, nice tall ceilings. All these bedrooms are very decently sized. This is over a 4,000 square foot house. So it's not like you're just gonna be able to fit a bed in these scenes. They have plenty of room. Whether you have kids, you wanna put bunk beds, dressers, you've got the room for it. Straight behind you is the lounge areas and the two bedrooms that we just looked at. We're going to have an extra room up here with a cool transom that could be an office, a playroom, a classroom. It has a lot of different uses for it and it gets a nice access to your own beautiful balcony that's fully tiled. You can put a nice table up here and have breakfast and with a cup of coffee, overlook your beautiful neighborhood that as you can tell from my mic right now, it's very quiet. This would work good as an upstairs office or playroom of some kind because it does have its own bathroom off to the side here. It has dual vanity sinks, the same dark wood cabinetry, glass tile surround, little window up there is nice, brings in some natural light, big mirror, and it has a tub set up and a toilet in the water room, which that's interesting, but you still get that separation. So I'm coming down the hall, overlooking the beautiful living space with these tall ceilings over the banister. We have a secondary set of higher windows, which is nice because it adds light to this landing area as I walk across and come into bedroom number three of this upstairs area. Each door of this house is oversized. If you haven't noticed that watching the video right now, this is a way taller door than your typical door. Everything is just a bit bigger in this house, making it more grand. We have a nice size slide closet. We have some baseboards and not just your typical plank wood baseboard. This actually has detail in it. 
it's been mitered. We have a window here, central heat and air throughout this house. And let's come on into the primary bedroom. Has a grand entrance, double doors, leads into the by far the biggest bedroom in this house. And it has the same nice baseboards with the mitered woodwork in it. It has some sconces. It has lots of nice windows. You can tell this is the perfect area for the bed, not only because of the sconces, but the fact that it gives the little windows up high so your headboard doesn't block them. That is a nice touch as a developer. We're gonna have big windows and your own balcony overlooking your backyard. I would like to mention before we come down this nice hallway switching back to the marble tile that we saw downstairs, this whole upstairs has been carpet from the stairs up. That makes it much cozier instantly. You don't even really notice it, except, hey, this is a place where I go to rest. This is a bedroom area, and that's one of the aspects that makes that switch. So coming on down, we're gonna have two big sliding mirrors leading into the his and her closets. I haven't seen a closet set up like this leading into a bathroom before, so it's cool to see. I like it, how set up it is. It has instant access to his or her clothes. We're going to also have dual vanity sinks, but on opposite sides, so you kind of have a his corner and a her corner. We have the same dark wood cabinets brought into this master as well, just more of them. You have your actual water closet with a fan, big spa tub with a window, and then your walk-in shower. What more can you ask from a primary suite with the big closets, big bathroom, and the big place to lounge, put your bed, even a balcony to overview your backyard. Before we go downstairs into the backyard, a couple quick things I forgot to mention. Crown molding. It instantly makes this place more grand when you enter the primary bedroom. And then I'm not a big fan of ceiling fans, but this one was done pretty right if you're gonna have one. It's just a nice looking wood ceiling fan. All right, we're now in the backyard under this nice tall patio. You have a nice covered area to put a couple tables have a party, a gathering. You could even have your barbecue here, a little fire pit that's propane or gas, because there is gas on the property. Right here on this patio, we have the doors coming off of the main living space. When you enter the property, we have the junior primary bedroom over here. We have the secondary living space kitchen over here. So lots of different ways to enter in the backyard again, which is nice, even though it's not a large backyard. If you're serving food, you want people to be able to come into the kitchen area and get their food, or you can bring the food out instead of going around through the whole living space. So just well thought out little things like that. It's a very functional floor plan. While this lot is a good size, it's a big house with a big driveway and a garage. So you're not going to have the biggest backyard, but they utilize the space well. And one of the things they did is they give you a pool. This pool behind me is big and it's deep and it looks like it even has a little lounge area that you can chill out in and it has a couple shelves. Let's talk about the view real quick. Nice view and it's private. You're up on a hill, so you're not gonna have neighbors looking into your yard. So it's a very quiet private area. As you can see behind me, Great job by bringing in vines, raising the fence to add to the privacy. Nice fence over on this side with some trees. Got some simple wood chips, a little bit of grass here and there, all giving it a typical backyard feel that is coherent. Over here, we have a nice sized side yard. You could put a storage shed over here. This would be a nice area for your dog to play if you had animals. It also honestly could have a bigger fence installed and you could park an RV or something in there. Probably a small RV and a trailer could fit in there or another car, but I don't see that you need that because this has a three car garage. Speaking of which, let's go check it out. All right, I'm entering the garage. The kitchen is behind me. I love attached garages. You can bring your groceries in right from your car into your kitchen. In this garage, we could have three cars. One, two, three spots. So most people are probably not gonna have three cars unless it's a pretty large family in here and they all drive. So one of these areas could be turned into a little gym. It could be a shop area. And this garage is nice because it's actually finished. It's gonna have insulation and it's sheet rocked. The garage doors are fully automatic as you can see. Both of them are. And then it has a nice epoxied flooring as well. So they didn't just leave it. So it seals it. You can get some oil on it. It's not gonna hurt the concrete. The garage doors are nice too and even have glass along the top which brings in light so you don't always have to flick a light on. And since this house is larger, it has two water heaters making sure that you're always gonna have hot water in this place. This door is a side entrance on that side yard we saw with the side gate. With us today, we actually have the listing agent, Caleb, here. He was awesome to let us come out today and tour his beautiful listing. We appreciate it. We had a lot of fun. Clovis is a great area. 
We will talk more about the neighborhood later. But for right now, as I was touring, he showed me a cool thing about the kitchen that I didn't know about or catch. And feel welcome as well to talk about the house in depth a little bit more because you're going to know it better. Hey, yeah, thank you for having me on. So I wanted to touch on this wonderful plate warmer right here. As they've shown you, this is a very nice and well-lit chef style kitchen. And as you can see here, if you were to turn this on right here, the light comes on and it warms your food. So that way when you cook the food, it doesn't go cold. So to talk more about this community, it's actually a really close to community. Everyone knows each other and everyone's are really nice and really close together. And if you were to come into the community, you would actually notice that there's no gate, which is abnormal for a big community like this. And that's because they all are comfortable with each other. Driving into here from the first time, like we drove through neighborhood after neighborhood, that's a good neighborhood. So it makes sense on what he's saying. It was great that he brought up that point that I noticed that as well driving in. There's no gate yet, it's a gated community. It just doesn't have that part where you go and punch in the code and the gates open. It's because it's probably not necessary because you're deep in a good neighborhood upon neighborhoods. Something awesome to know too is Caleb, how old are you? I'm actually 19. He's over here 19, crushing it in the competitive real estate market. Hats off to you. He gave me some nice lead gen advice today, which I appreciate because that's always a new agent's number one problem is just getting those customers and getting your name out there. As we were doing this house tour, he was in there cold calling people, making sure that he gets through his lead generation of the day. And it's just inspiring from agent to agent to see. It'll make me go home and work harder, yeah. dial some numbers, send out some mailers. As a new agent like myself, it can get hard because you see everyone doing well. Yeah. And you wanna you wanna be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get my first deal. You wanna be like them. And yeah. you know, you just you may not know how to like necessarily get the business, but you know, something I've learned is just patience, honestly. Cause actually I had seven appointments before this. They all canceled on me. But the eighth one hit and it's just perseverance and patience and knowing that you have value and you bring value and the right person will appreciate that.